Welcome back! Hello! Woo. Today we'd like to discuss our long and sad relationship with Nintendo. Yeah. For me, it has come to an end. Well, no. It has not come to an end. I have to keep reminding myself that there is a 3DS. That this, ha that this handheld game system that I play constantly is Nintendo, but, con but console. My relationship with their consoles has come to an end. Uh, I always was a Nintendo boy growing up. Uh, Me too. I started with the NES. The first video games I played were on the NES. I was never a PC gamer. Uh, I was with Nintendo all the way up to the N64. I never... I got a PlayStation 1 near the end of its life. And when I first got it, my, my promise to myself was, but I'm only going to use it to play <laughs> games you were, you were cheating. that had started on the Nintendo. So the Final Fantasy games, oh my. almost. Like, any franchise that I had played on Nintendo that then continued on the PlayStation, that's it. Are you just are you just relieved that you did not hold yourself to that promise today? Okay. Uh, I, I was a Nintendo fanboy. Could you fan imagine boy. what you would be playing? <laughs> I was a Nintendo fanboy for a long time. My enthusiasm started to wane about halfway through the Wii's life, maybe. And then the Wii U was just... The Wii U was, for me, abysmal. I only... Own, I want to say six games for That's it. That's probably about how many I have, and I got it at launch. Me, yeah. Well, I didn't get it. Well, right close to, yeah. I got the, and I even got the special, um, because I would the I got the Wind Waker HD remake, the special one that came with the Wind Waker HD remake, and so it has the it has the special game pad, and it's black, and it has little like Hyrulean language glyph things around the side of it. It's fancy. I I like the Wii U as a console. I think it's capable of doing a lot of things, but good games for it. There's one or two games worth playing on it a year, if that. I wouldn't even say that, because if I am actually listing my collection, it is <laughs> Wind Waker <laughs> HD, Twilight Princess HD. So two remakes. So two remakes. Um, Mario Kart, which I always typically do the new Mario Kart. Um, Smash Brothers. No, I don't even have. I don't care about Smash Brothers. But it has Ness. But I don't care about Smash. I play Smash Brothers with you, and that's basically it. But so it why do I need to buy it? Okay, that's fine. Ness and Lucas are awesome. That's what we're trying to get across. Anyway, I don't have Smash Brothers. I have now. I have Xenoblade Chronicles, which is amazing, and that's the only reason it's probably still hooked up to my TV at this point. Um, because that's fun to just jump into every now and then. But it's I capable have. of doing so many cool things. The, the right. pad, being yeah. able to look around first person in the environment. But I think the thing that we learned, even from the Wii, which is why I don't understand why they did it with the Wii U, is that third-party developers don't care. They, they yeah, don't no. want to work with your weird little gimmicky technology. That's the real problem. And with that in mind, Nintendo would have to fill that void by stepping up with the first-party development and just putting out a lot of games, and they don't. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, the fact that at E3 this year, the only thing they really showed was a new Legend of Zelda, which, well, if I'm being honest, I don't even care about and didn't even look that great. Personally, I don't think it even looked that great. And that's I didn't exactly, even care enough like, to look anymore. No, it's like, and it's like Twilight Princess. They said Twilight Princess was going to be for the GameCube, and then technically it was. Technically, there was a Twilight Princess for the GameCube, but it was really for the Wii. I mean, yeah, this new they developed that for the week. This new Zelda is for the NX, right? And this is going to be the first time. Finally, I'm not getting an NX when it comes out. I'm not saying I'll never get one. It's possible. Like five years from now, there will be enough games on there that I want to play that I'll get one. If the NX somehow becomes like what the Super NES was. <laughs> then yes, I will go buy one. The NX has to win me over, and Nintendo has never had to do that with me before. But the Wii U, just, it never got the use that it needed. There were some fun games on there and that are fun to play. Pikmin 3, I liked a lot. It was a lot of fun to play on there. I even liked the, the Lego Adventure game was pretty fun. That was available on there. Yeah. Uh, Smash Brothers, because it has Ness. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, but... No, I'm not going to say that I don't like Smash Brothers. I don't see any reason for me to buy and solo play <laughs> Smash Brothers for any way, shape, or form. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, and it's very it's been very clear since kind of the Wii that Nintendo has decided to focus on smaller or younger gamers. Yeah. I feel like they really just lost it with the Wii U because the the Wii third party developers didn't necessarily like to develop for, but I still have a pretty decent collection of really good Wii games. Well, and there's Nintendo's still capable of putting out good games. The Fire Emblem series. Right. Uh, although, I think I liked Awakening more than Fates. Yes. Well, Fates was just about dating your brother and sister. As Which, I think that maybe mind. should be its own yeah. separate video, because... Oh, dear. No. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, I should point out, we will do a video at one point. Russ and I actually camped out to get a Wii on okay. launch day. It was quite the adventure. We I got do... sick. I yeah. reenacted scenes from the Golden Girls against my will. Yes. So maybe that's well. I had the Golden Girls cosplay forced on me. Um, Golden Girls cosplay. No, there wasn't cosplay. Was, okay, it thank was you. Role play. Like, was, I'm sorry. Were you in an alternate dimension when this happened? <laughs> I'm sorry. It was role play. <laughs> we, no, let's Russ, just go Russ ahead and tricked me into. Let's go with the story that we dressed as Dorothy and Sophia. Yeah. And sat outside a Target for 12 hours, <laughs> waiting to get a Wii. Yes, it happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. It it happened, yes. It happened in the Red Universe, for any <laughs> for any Fringe fans out there. Anyway. Um, but yeah, the NES, the Super Nintendo. The N64 started to go a little downhill. See, I never had an N64. After the Super NES, I bought a PlayStation. And I did not give myself some kind of restriction that I was going to only play series that started on Nintendo. I held back on getting a GameCube for a while because I was upset about the whole not releasing Mother 3 thing here at the time. Little did I know what a disappointment that game actually kind of was. Yeah. Mother 3 not a huge disappointment, but it is a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, it's not worth the hype. But uh, I did finally get a GameCube when they released a Smash Brothers. I went, look, Ness, I'll take it. So, <laughs> I'm glad you're predictable. At least I'm not still on the Final Fantasy bandwagon. Well, but I can break the cycle. I might break the cycle after 15. You never. But this isn't what that's about. This is no. This video is not about that. No, it's just. It's just it, about you know we're what? both disappointed in Nintendo. You, you know what? One of the best games that I played from Nintendo in the last I want two years, Hyrule Warriors. Oh, they yes. they let. Another company mm -hmm. play with their intellectual property, and it came out really well. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and in fact, on the Wii U, it works really well because the pad, one player can play on the pad, and the other player gets the screen, which works really well for two players. You're not cutting your screen in half. If you're holding the screen right here, it is big enough to run around and play. Like it, It's a great two-player experience because of the Wii U. It's a fun game. I don't know why... Nintendo doesn't do that more. Branching out with their intellectual property and letting third-party developers play with it. You know there are some people well, out there who would like to do some stuff to Mario. I've to heard learn. they're branching out with Mario and it's going to be on mobile phones. That's not and what I mean. probably be all microtransactions. <laughs> like, that's not what I mean. 50 cents for 12 jumps. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I honestly believe that's the future of Nintendo. I think me, isn't it called Mimoto? I think that's like just the beginning of Nintendo becoming basically a cell phone game developer. Probably not in the near future, but in another decade or so. Nintendo <laughs> that's just kind of what I see happening, unless the NX is like another Super NES. Somehow. They seem to be intent on spreading themselves very thin over a wide area, but not having any depth at all. So we're going to do some mobile games, and we'll do some shovelware games, we'll have some games for kids. What about a serious hardcore game? Well, we'll put out a Zelda every five years or so. Right. And we'll devote an entire E3 to it. Because we got nothing else. Nothing else. Except that Paper Mario, that's another thing that really has made me mad about Nintendo. Those first two Paper Mario games, those were some of the best games, best experiences I had playing a game, and then after that, we had Super Paper Mario, which was fine. It was okay. 
And then there was that sticker star. Mm, I no. never even played it. No, 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 no. That is not how you do it. And then they have some other new one for the Wii U, and it's basically just another sticker star. You, It's not an RPG anymore. You don't really have stats. You just collect stickers or colors or something in this new one. And it, they, they, they absolutely ruined that franchise. So the, the first two Paper Marios were okay, but... I they That's came... blasphemous. You say that they were wonderful. <laughs> I liked them. They were okay. But I really liked blasphemous. Super Mario RPG, which is what where they came from, really. Right. Yeah. And again, oh, that, that was... was a third-party yeah. developer getting to play with Nintendo's stuff. Right. And they turned out what I think is a really great game. I think Super Mario RPG is probably the best Mario RPG there is. Oh, yeah. Since then, Nintendo had that. went up, went okay. That was great that you helped us with that. We're gonna take our toys back and we're gonna make them ourselves. And I don't think any of their RPGs that they've made themselves have been as good as Super Mario no. RPG. That's why they I'm saying Paper Mario's okay because yeah. I'm comparing it to Super right. Mario RPG. The first, but the, the first two were were real RPGs. Again, it it just, it just turns out if they take, they have a great cast of characters. They've got a great history. Mm -hmm. If they let other people come in with new ideas as to what to do with those, I think you can get some really good products out of it. Hyrule Warriors was amazing, and you know where else you can play it? On your 3DS. 3DS. And if you Not have a new, first, new 3DS, I know, but now it has, and I like it better. I got it on my new 3DS, and I like it better. You can swap your characters, and it just... They're just, yeah, I, I actually like it better. I didn't know if I would like it on the handheld as much, um, but I actually like it better there anyway. Um, Metroid Prime was mainly made by a third-party developer, wasn't it? I don't really know anything about Metroid, but... Sure, yes. Then again, I think Metroid Other M was as well. Wasn't that the terrible one? I don't... I. I haven't played a Metroid game since Super NES, since Super the Metroid. Super, the Super Metroid was awesome. Super yeah. Metroid was great. Uh... Yeah, that's that's my biggest thing is clearly Nintendo is not able to put out 15 games in a year. They just don't have the resources. But I'll bet you there are video game companies out there who would love to play with your toys and could help you actually release a catalog of games so that I'm not looking at my Wii U going, I've got six games for this thing. I do. Yeah, I, I think I have more because I've been less picky. But yeah, I just, I just, good, because of good I games, just have to be more picky. I've got maybe three or four games on the Wii U that I feel like are worth playing. I'll t I will say that the only Wii U game that isn't available anywhere else, like Hyrule Warriors Legends, is Xenoblade Chronicles. Like, that's the one that made that, that made that pur purchase worth it for me. <laughs> one game. One game. For a console. Yeah. I mean, Mario Kart's great. I always like a good Mario Kart, but there are lots of other Mario. You know, there are lots of other Mario Karts um, that don't have all seven Koopalings as characters as well. Thank you, Nintendo, for that decision. Um, but yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles saved that console for me. But one game is not enough to get me to buy another console. Yeah. So the NX is going to have to win me over. I'm sorry, Nintendo. I've been a lifelong Nintendo fan, but I don't feel like Nintendo's been a lifelong Jeff fan. <laughs> right. I, I feel like the company didn't want to grow up with its customer base and instead wanted to keep targeting young kids. And they and, changed the way they did it, too, because yeah. Nintendo games, when we were kids, were hard, man. Yeah. Nintendo hard was a phrase. Hand battle toads to any kid nowadays. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I dare you. Would any kid have the attention span to even attempt that? <laughs> and even, and here's a comparison, because I think we're doing a video on this eventually. A Boy and His Blob mm -hmm. for the NES. That is not an easy game. No. Then they made a remake for the Wii. That was an easy game. Like, but adorable. Yes, it had a hug the blob button. Oh, I love the hug the blob button. If that whole game could have just been hugging that blob, that would have... I feel like you might be defeating my point. That would have been a dream. <laughs>
So any app developers out there, if you can develop a Hug the Blob app, yes, if Nintendo wants Russ to develop will give you his money. An iOS game that is just about hugging a blob. <laughs> yes. Russ will give you all his money. You will make a bank. <laughs> just from him. Oh. Only, only $9.99 for 100 hugs. And I'm not saying I want Nintendo to grow up and make all gritty. No. I, I I don't need Zelda to be coping with her drug problem and, and Link running around saying F this and F that and F you Ganon in, the, in, 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 in your holes. Uh, Actually, I'd kind of like to see that. <laughs> I, I'd like to see Zelda with the drug problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying that it's possible to make games geared towards serious gamers and or adults without them being of mature subject matter. So when I'm saying Nintendo didn't grow up with us, I don't mean it didn't throw in lots of blood and gore and swearing. I mean it just seemed to lose that, that part of it that cared about making a challenging interesting game that you could be invested in. You know what it cared about? It cared about selling a Wii to your mom with a copy of Wii Fit. Yeah. That's basically what Nintendo cared about. They wanted the everybody in the house to use the Wii for something. Yeah. And ended up alienating their core audience, which is us. It was us. It was. We totes were. We totes were their core audience. Totes. My goat. Totes my goats, your core audience. And you forsook us. You forsook us. You chased me into the arms of the PlayStation. You did. Well, to be fair, they did that to me a long time ago. Nothing beat the Super Nintendo. No, it didn't. Yeah. No. Not the, uh, Sega Genesis? <laughs> no. I, I don't care what anime girl it turns into. <laughs> There's actually two series uh, of like animes and games and whatever where Sega consoles are represented by anime girls. There yes. are two. Yes. There's the Hyper Dimension Neptunia right. series, which is your fault. You got me into that. And then it turns out there's some anime series about all the Sega consoles going to school together as girls, called Sega Hard Girls or something like that. And the newest Neptunia game that comes out in a couple months is the crossover between those two worlds. I am relieved that you have more knowledge about this than me at this point. I don't know if you noticed, there was a lot of I thinks and sort of, oh. and I'm not even 100% sure of the names. But for some reason, people have gone around personifying the Sega consoles as girls. That seems to be a thing now. Well, that, yes, that's an anime thing. Or mo moe, or whatever. You, you don't see them. Do, where, where's the N64? Why does the N64 not to be somebody? Poor N64, man. It really, it should not have been cartridge-based. Did you ever play Quest 64? I did, actually. It was... that, that's probably why nobody made a Moe girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, the 64... if, that, if that's something memorable from your system. They were really <laughs> stretching the limits of what they could do with a cartridge and failing it. The 64 is when things started to go bad. There's, Remember when Final Fantasy VII was going to be for the N64? If you Google, you can find clips of the Final Fantasy VII for the N64. Yeah, they did. They did, like, test stuff with characters from Final Fantasy VI in, like, 3D models. And a cartridge I guess that didn't it. last long. Although they say the NX might be cartridge-based. But well, you can still you can, do a lot with it. I mean, if you now now you cartridges can, can do a lot now. more. Technology has leaped forward because the 3DS is cartridges, right? And the Vita has those. Are those considered cartridges? Yeah, the Vita's I mean, the Vita is little memory cards about the size of yeah. your thumb, but they're cartridges. Yeah, they're not they're not CD because cartridges don't have the loading time. So if the rumors are true and the NX is going to cartridges, again, I think it'll alienate third party developers because you got to make it special for Nintendo. And hopefully they're tiny so that I can stress out about not losing them like I do on my Vita cartridges. Yeah, you, you want the big clunky. I do. I want something I can hold in my whole hand. Nintendo, I want a cartridge that I can hold in my whole because hand. Because I know you're watching this video, Nintendo. I know you want us back. <laughs> you can have us back.
You just have to woo us. Him, maybe. If they wooed you hard enough. If it was all JRPGs, as far as the eye could see. If, per if Persona, and not that weird, not that weird Persona Fire Emblem, the Persona Q whatever. No, it's it's for the Wii U, and it's like some kind of mashup of pers pers persona, persona and Fire Emblem, but it's about like Japanese idols. See, now he's interested. Um... <laughs> I'm not talking like about persona. that. You put like Persona 5 on the Wii U or the NX and you have my attention. What about Mother 4? That would be that would be for the handhelds. If it no. was at this point full blown HD no, extravaganza, I, th that's not what Mother is. Mother is supposed to be just weird and quirky and no, that would be for a handheld. If if there were a Mother 4 that was HD and in your face on the NX, I don't think I would want to play that Mother game. <laughs> well, luckily, the creator of Mother has made it pretty clear he's not going to make that game. So It's probably for the best. That man is crazy. Yeah. That man is crazy pants. Let's just, let's just leave it at Earthbound. Yeah. All right. So, that's it. Nintendo, uh, you're dead to us. Wow. Uh, no, you're not, because you make the 3DS. And I honestly keep forgetting. That is not, that's not like a bit. He's that not I'm doing. speaking for me. That's you're not, not dead to me. You, we just need some space. All right? I need my space. And when you decide that you want to be like we used to be, you let me know. I'll be here. Hi, I'm Luke Bryan, two time CMA Entertainer of the Year. If I ever learn how to read, I'm going to read The Great Platypus Caper by Jeff Hillary because I believe in supporting fine literature. I'm Luke Bryan. Hi.